What's up, party people? I'm DIY Dane, and this is actually the Long Shot Garage. I'm finally in the Long Shot Garage, kind of. So the deal here is this is just a typical two-car garage. It is 20 foot by 20 foot. I'm a DIY guy, I always have been, and I've never had the space to do what I wanna do until now. And in this video, I'm gonna introduce the series to a garage addition build that will hopefully solve those problems. Check this out. So it's always been my dream to have a nice workspace or some form of a workshop. And you know, for a lot of, a lot of time, like many of you, I suspect, I didn't have anything. I had to just do things where I could get them done. Maybe at a friend's place or in a driveway. I did what I had to do. Ultimately, I had a deep one car garage, which was actually pretty cool. And then I immediately went into a three car garage, which served more as a storage unit, actually. It was just packed full of junk. I, you know, to buy that house, we, we, me and my wife worked a lot and there was never time to organize that garage or I never made time. So ultimately we moved here and I'm on about a third of an acre and I specifically bought this property to build a thousand square foot shop. I made a kind of big mistake right off the bat. I did not check to see what the setbacks were. I didn't know to, I learned it the hard way. I can't put a thousand square foot shop because ultimately there's a 30 foot setback off the back of my property which means the shop would be too close to the house and it just wouldn't function. It wouldn't work, wouldn't fit. And so that really leaves me with adding a garage addition to this existing garage, which isn't what I wanted. And ultimately I could have built the garage I'm about to build in this series. I could have done that when I bought the house in around the mid two thousands. In hindsight, I should have done that, but you live, you learn. And I guess you just got to weigh out, you know, what you can do and what you want to do at that time. Like I say, hindsight's twenty twenty. Basically, like I said, I have a two-car garage here, a real typical two-car garage. And I'm going to blow a hole in that wall, and I'm going to build a tandem two-car garage with about an extra five feet. So it's going to measure 12 and a half foot wide and 45 and a half foot long. And that's kind of where the name came from because, you know, it's a long garage, and pretty much everything I do is a long shot. It all started with me trying to lay this project out in SketchUp. Cause you know, I had to have plans and I thought I'm gonna do this, I'm a DIY guy, right? I'm gonna do this myself. People do go to SketchUp and they do make plans and they can go to the desk at the city and get permits, it can be done. Not by me. <laughs> now I always say, if I can do it, you can do it. Well, this is a case where I don't think I could do it, but maybe you could do it, it just depends. The problem isn't the dimensions and laying the stuff out. The problem is the technical details with the, the type of nails, the number of nails, you know, there's a, there's a learning curve to this. And I've actually been watching a ton of YouTube videos and doing a ton of research to learn things like the details of framing. And I knew the general gist of framing, but you start watching videos and there's a lot of little details to it. That's another great thing about YouTube. If you want to learn it, you can do it. You just got to go find the right video. I came to the conclusion I need an architect. I found an architect who drew up plans and there's things I just didn't understand, like the rebar in the, in the concrete, which, you know, I wasn't going to do that part myself anyway. But you still need the plans for all that. For me, starting with an architect, that was a good choice. Um, secondly, I'm going to be my own general contractor. There's a couple of reasons. One, I'm really cheap and I don't want to pay a general contractor. Two, I'm a little bit of a control freak and I want to do it myself. Not to mention, this is a really important project to me. And I want my hands on it and I want to be there along the way to make sure it's the way I want it. Now, not hiring a general contractor could save me money and it could cost me money. I'll let you know when this is all over. You know, along the way, I'll share with you everything. I'll share with you the good and the bad, the things I did right, the things I did wrong, and the cost of it all. I'm going to be the general and ultimately I only need to hire four trades. I have to hire out the concrete because I, I, I'm never going to be a concrete guy. I don't get it. I don't want to get it. Uh, concrete's just not for me. Uh, I really wanted to frame it myself, and I'm this close to thinking I could do it, but I, I think it would be better if I had someone do it. Maybe I could help, maybe not. We'll see what happens. I kind of have something in the works for that. Of course, I need the stucco done. I tried stucco once, also not for me. Uh, stucco is an art form. Stucco is not easy. And uh, of course, I, the people who did my roof are going to do the roof. It's a, it's a flat roof. They just spray stuff on. Not going to do that. Uh, what I am going to do is the insulation, the wiring, the drywall, 
Um, I'm going to install the garage door and I'm going to build a door for the back. I have a couple different ideas. We'll see when I get there. Uh, and every one of these is going to be a video. I'm going to share with you how I did it. And uh, like I said, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm starting here pretty quick. I've already got the concrete guy, but the first thing I have to do is knock a hole in that wall. There's a couple reasons for that. One, I want the concrete in both garages level. And I know a guy down the street who added a third car garage. His garage floors were not level because they didn't cut the hole before they poured the uh, new concrete foundation. The other thing is the stem wall. So that, that cinder block, it's a block wall, not wood. It goes down below the foundation the way this is set up. And there's cinder block down there and foundation down there. And if I cut that out after, you're going to see that. You'd have to, I have to fill that with concrete or have the concrete guy come back and do it. So I'd much rather have the foundation poured into that location and up against this existing foundation, which I mean, I'm in a garage. I don't know that this is technically the foundation. Like that's foundation in the closet. This may just be a concrete pad like the driveway. There's something else, you know, I'll figure out. I'll ask the concrete guy what's what. Um, and the reason I say that is the concrete is in the garage is lower than the concrete of the house that I know is the foundation. Let me go and show you the location of the garage addition. So this is actually where the garage addition is gonna be. This is the side of my house. I'm at the back right here. And that fence up in front is gonna go away. The gate's gonna go away. There'll be a smaller gate over here. And it's gonna continue almost to the front of the house. There's about three or four feet uh, at the front of the house where it has to stop because there's electrical there. And it'll actually look better because it's going to match the rest of the house. It's going to look ultimately like a, you know, three-car garage in any normal neighborhood these days. All the tools and the workbenches are going to go back here at the back. I can open the door. I don't think I'm going to do a slide-up garage door. I think I might do a barn door or I'm going to do swing-out doors. One, to save some money. Two, to have another project. Ultimately, because I don't want all the stuff overhead. I need it in the front. There will be a roll up in the front to match the other garage door, but also because there'll be an opener and I'll park a car in there. Back here, we're going to play with that. We're going to see what works, but it will be set up for a standard one car garage door, just like the front. You got to think about sales. You got to think about the future. You know, you really do have to think about the future. And this is future day in here to tell you, you better clean up that garage because this project's moving a lot faster than you thought it would. I got to clean all this up. Please like, subscribe, share, and ring the bell so you get notifications on the next episode of The Long Shot Garage.